Hello. So Super Simple Skybox is a single material that enables you to easily set up a stylized skybox in Unity. Um, in this video, I will provide a tutorial on how to use this uh, Skybox Unity asset. This is designed for Unity 2020.3 for Universal Render Pipeline and was made using Shader Graph completely. So it's extremely to use, easy to use this Skybox shader as a base for any additional customizations that you might need. The Skybox also includes 2D clouds with five different cloud art assets built in and beautiful night skies with 10 different uh, night sky art assets that you can use either in this asset or anywhere else in your project. The main features for this asset are that it is plug and play. You can just drag and drop the Skybox material into your scene's Skybox material slot and you're done. That it's extendable code free. Um, it, all the shaders that are included in the pack are provided in Shader Graph, so it's extremely easy to extend or to enhance the shader to your needs without doing any coding. And, and last, it's extremely customizable. You're able to configure the skybox with 29 different parameters, including cloud and star textures, daytime and nighttime colors, sun colors, sunset parameters, and more. Uh, so now I'm going to provide a quick tutorial or demo on how to configure some of the different settings and what they do in this asset. Okay, we're going to start by looking at the ground color, horizon zenith color blend, uh, day horizon color, day zenith color, night horizon color, and night zenith color settings, as well as the horizon desaturation fall off and horizon saturation amount settings. These are all settings that configure the basic colors that you'll see in your sky. The ground color configures the bottom below the Y axis of the of the sky so you can configure this to be the same as your fog color which is what i would recommend or just leave it black if you have other geometry that will be covering your ground and your scene the horizon or zenith color blend allows you to move the day horizon color or sorry the horizon color and the zenith color either up or down within the skybox i'll give you a better view of that here so you can see as i bring this up the horizon color will move further up towards the zenith of the scene and as you bring it down, the zenith color will do the same. So here I'll just give you another example with the color white instead, and then bringing that up and bringing it down. Something in the middle is quite good. If you move the scene from the daytime to the nighttime, you'll be able to see the scene transition the, from the, the sky color from the day color to the night color. This transition happens um, as the sun moves below the horizon. I'll show you an example of that now. So this one's completely using the night colors now. You can see if we bring those colors down, you can see really powerful night, night sky colors shine through here. The next thing that I'll show you is the horizon desaturation uh, fall off and amount. So the desaturation controls the extent to which uh, basically like what we're doing here is we're desaturating the colors of the horizon as they get closer to the horizon. Um, and so the fall off controls, when do we start doing that desaturation and how quickly do we get to the max value? And then the horizon saturation amount controls to what extent we are actually just using the horizon color itself um, as the horizon. Some examples there. Uh, so next we're going to look at the sun colors, size, and sunset settings. Okay, so now we will look at the sun settings. The sun horizon color is applied when the sun is closer to the horizon, and the zenith color is applied when it's closer to the top of the sky. And you can configure the sun size using this parameter that controls the exact size of the sun. Um, it's easier to see when it's not on the horizon, so I'll go ahead and move this up. So you can see that you can make the sun very small or quite large. 
And then as you bring the sun down towards the horizon, we start to incorporate those sunset colors. And we also get to take advantage of these sunset settings. So we have horizontal fall off, which controls how far this, this um, lighting goes, the vertical fall off, and the radial fall off. So these three different parameters work together to give you a really beautiful sunset appearance in your scene. And you can also control the intensity of the sunset as well. All right, so now we will take a look at the different cloud settings. This asset comes built in with five different cloud textures that tile seamlessly. Uh, one of them is based on real clouds. The other four are based on various other natural um, uh, items in nature. So we have flames, flower, liquid, and petals. Uh, right now we're using um, the liquid, but I'll swap it in for the clouds, flames, flower, liquid, and petals. The wind speed um, controls the rate at which these, this texture um, tiles over the screen. So if we bring this up, you can see that the clouds move more quickly along the x-axis, and you can move it either direction. And if we bring the y component up um, closer to negative numbers, um, then it moves up more quickly, and then if you bring it to the positive side, it moves down more quickly. The cloudiness controls the extent to which the scene is basically like cloudy. So bring this all the way down, you won't really see much clouds at all in your scene. Bring this to a middle setting, will let you have somewhat scattered clouds throughout your scene. And then bring this all the way up, will give you quite a thick cloud cover uh, in your scene. We also have the cloud sharpness setting. This one allows you to give your clouds really sharp edges like this for a more stylized appearance. Um, bringing this up gives you much softer clouds for more realistic or higher altitude style clouds. And uh, the cloud height fall off controls how quickly the clouds fade out as they approach the top of the skybox. So bringing this down will cause them to um, fall off less quickly and then bring this up will cause them to fall off more quickly. In other words, having a high value in the cloud height fall off will cause the clouds to propagate more ar around the horizon. And then finally, the scale allows you to control um, the frequency at which the cloud textures tile. Bringing that up makes it tile more frequently, bringing it down makes it tile less frequently. And then the last thing that we'll look at with respect to clouds is the day cloud color and the night cloud color. You can completely set the color of the clouds in your scene based on the day or nighttime. This gives you a lot of control over um, how you want the clouds to look at different times of day. So that's the clouds in this scene. As you can see, there's a lot of control. Um, they look really nice and um, they're extremely performant. All right, and the last thing that we'll look at is the night sky. So with this asset, I've included 10 different tiling uh, night sky textures. These are either made procedurally or taken from real photographs um, of the night sky and I'll swap them in and out so you can see different examples of what the night sky can look like. So that's number one, number two, number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Um, so I'll just keep it, let's say, number five for now, or maybe number one for now. 
As you can see, there's a lot of control here. Um, you can also bring in your own star textures. You can also bring in your own cloud textures as well. Um, and you can uh, control the uh, sort of rate at which the stars fall off near the horizon. So uh, you don't necessarily want your stars reaching all the way down to the horizon. So you can have them fade out as they approach the horizon using this setting. You can also control the scale of the star texture by bringing this star scale setting down or up. Note that bringing it up can cause some more visibly obvious tiling to appear and bringing it too far down can cause the results to look more pixelated or blurry. So um, I definitely recommend a setting between probably 0.4 to 0.8, I think is quite appropriate. The star speed controls the rate at which the star texture pans over the sky. So bringing that up causes the stars to move more quickly through the sky. And then bringing that down causes them to move less quickly. You can also control the star intensity. So bringing this down causes it to become less, uh, uh, less intense on the, on the sky. And then you can use only the star texture if you'd like um, by bringing both the night horizon and night zenith color all the way down. Um, so now here we're just only using the star texture. And then finally, um, if you want to, you can also include the night sky, the night sky stars uh, in your scene during the day as well. So now we're at the day and you can see if I bring up the star daytime brightness, you can see the stars um, start to pop through during the daytime, which is really nice for um, more stylized, more celestial type scenes. Okay, um, so that's just about everything. I've also included a really simple script called Set Sun Position that allows you to just pop it onto your directional light and you can really easily uh, have your directional light move through the sky of your scene. So increasing the rotation speed will allow your sun to just automatically move through the night sky without any input from you. Um, so that's one setting and then the Last thing that I want to show is that this entire uh, asset is made with entirely within Shader Graph. So it's extremely easy for you to edit uh, if you'd like to at any point in the future, edit any of the sort of base functionality uh, of this skybox to make it more suitable for your particular needs. Um, so this whole, whole um, shader is here and also includes a bunch of different subgraphs that go into the, the functionality of that. Okay, so you can get this asset on, on my website, okasoftware.com, uh, for $4.99 right now. And um, I'm always here to help provide support if you have any questions. So always feel free to email me with any questions at okasoftware at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.